Well, hello, my name is Marcus, and so today I want to talk to you a little bit about my own personal story, and then a little bit how that sort of runs into Ministry of Change, which is essentially a storytelling project around mental health and what it means to be human. So, um, I think that the really exciting thing about getting to share your story is that each time you share it, you share a slightly different version of it, and it's really useful to sort of see how you're evolving and growing, and I, and I like that. So today, I think this, the version of that story I'm going to tell is one about a loss of connection and finding it again. So a lot of this story is really rooted in my own personal experiences with depression and anxiety. And really, I, I think it's sort of highlighted on this sort of period a couple of years ago where I really felt trapped, where I really felt like life just wasn't working for me. I, I just felt that life wasn't working, and I think actually it was really hard to explain what, what depression is like to someone that hasn't ever experienced it before, because words can't really do it justice. So like, I'll, I'll try and paint a little picture of, of how it felt to me. Don't worry, it won't be too, too bad. So, well, let's just go for it. Uh, I mean, essentially, I was in this place where I felt so trapped. Like, the world just didn't seem to make any sense. The, it was a world that was drained of technicolour. It was a world where like, even the flowers didn't really seem to bloom anymore. Everything was futile, and everything just seemed purposeless. And, I mean, it felt like this sort of space sort of, like, eternal bottomlessness where so the days just seemed to roll into days and days and days and there were like days where I'd actually just lie on the living room floor and like, stare up at the ceiling all day and sometimes I'd cry more often than not I wouldn't because I couldn't I didn't feel anything anymore I just felt numb and then there were other days where I felt bad but I thought I'd try and go outside and I'd walk down I was living in Brighton at the time and I'd walk down Brighton seafront and it'd be a like, nice sunny day, and I'd see people smiling. And if anything, that was worse than lying on the floor because I'd just see these people and feel so disconnected and think, I'm, I, I don't think I'm part of that. I don't feel human anymore because I don't have any of that sense of joy. I can't really see that anymore. And I just had this real understanding that, that stuff wasn't working and I needed to do something to change that. I think it was around, that time, yeah, I mean, where I sort of started looking, I had these feelings of not wanting to be there and I was looking up what, what that really meant and I came across this statistic around suicide, it said around 6,000 people in the UK alone every year die by suicide. And that really struck me. And then between the ages of 18 and 49, men aged between 18 and 49, they're in the highest bracket of suicide. And like, do you know how many people die each year in road traffic accidents in the UK? Like, it's just a little bit less than 1,500. And that's not saying that's not, that's like, that's a huge amount of people. Like, every single one of those people, it's a tragedy. But the thing that really struck me and scared me about that statistic was that as a man in my early 30s, especially one with a history of depression and anxiety, I was in a statistic that was far more likely to die by my own hand than I was to die in a traffic accident. Yeah, and, and so I think like I, I, with the work I do now, like sometimes I don't really know, uh, whenever I start to feel sort of unsure or something, that's just something that I can sort of go back to and remind myself that the work I'm doing now is important. But I'm jumping ahead. I, I went, um, so around that time, I was feeling like that. I was feeling like I didn't want to be here and I knew I had to make some changes. And I was doing some small things. Uh, I, I was going out running, I was journaling, I was meditating, and that all helped a little bit. But I think it got to this point where I, I, I sort of had this epiphany that actually, despite all these things, to a large degree, I'm still just sitting here waiting for someone to tell me what to do, tell me how to live life. And I thought, I need to do something about it. And around that time, or a bit before actually, but I'd been sort of coerced into doing therapy and I'd started to see 
how sharing even with just a few close friends and family, how transformational that felt to me. I think I'd always had this fear that if I shared how I really felt, then people would be repelled. But that's obviously not true. When you share how you really feel, people come towards you because other people also feel like that. Not the same, but other people are struggling with things in their life. And I think that's what I found when I started to share things. So I thought about that and I thought, like, how has this really helped me? And I realised that telling stories, telling our own story, it has this effect. It had it then and it still has it on me now. That you sort of get this opportunity to sort of like stand outside of your own life for a moment. And you get to sort of walk around it. And I don't know if, if anyone in here is a writer, like uh, I'm sure there must be some people, obviously you've done some writing. And I, I have this technique when I'm writing maybe an article or a blog post where I'll sort of just sit down and I'll write it all, like maybe in one go. And then I'll like sort of lean back at the end, like basking in its glow. And I'll think, <laughs> bloody hell, Marcus. That is like, that's amazing. That's possibly the best bit of literature that's ever been written in the English language. And, uh, and then what I'll do is, like, I know it's great, so I'll, I'll leave it for a bit and I'll go, go for a walk or something and then maybe about sort of a day or two later I'll come back and look at it again. And I'll think, bloody hell, Marcus. <laughs> and I'll look at it and think most of that was absolute rubbish. But like what it, given that space has really given me the opportunity to go back and sort of see the bits where I wasn't clear and the bits where I was going off on tangents. And I think that's what storytelling does as well. I think you can stand outside and you can start to see the bits of your life that have been unclear, uh, where bits come from. And also you can sort of look at the threads and see which thread do I want to follow and which threads do I want to sort of leave behind. And then there's, as a listener, I think it really helped me as well because when you're in the throes of, of, of a period like that sort of dark night of the soul, it can feel so isolating, like no one else is going through this experience. But when you start to listen to stories, you hear that everyone is navigating something and that there is no one way to live your life. And that to me was really liberating. So I started, that would have been a good place for a pause. <laughs> so, uh, so, so anyway, so uh, that's what someone told me when I practiced it earlier. Like, look, look the uh, so um, I started this thing, Ministry of Change, which sort of tried to encompass that storytelling aspect of it. So I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew I needed to change something. It was actually a really painful period of my life and I had to make some really big decisions and it was like a lot of anguish there. But I essentially I bought a van. And I decided I'm not going to live in my apartment anymore, and I just set off, and I just knew I needed to have conversations with people. And so, eventually, I couldn't really explain to people what it was, but I was just like, I just know, I'll just talk, it's fine, it'll work out. And eventually, over the last two years, it's evolved into a podcast, uh, and also just a space where I create space for people to sort of share their experiences with mental health, and how to navigate life. And so through that, I've had this amazing opportunity to sort of sit down with so many people. I, I mean, there's some examples, like I spoke, there's a guy in, who lives here, well, oh, not here, Brighton actually, who, uh, <laughs> who uh, used his experience, uh, he, he used wild swimming to explore his experiences of anxiety. Um, I also spoke to a, hello. <laughs> uh, I also spoke to a, um, a woman, a, 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 a mother who used her navigated blah, 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 mother who navigated her um, alcohol addiction and reconnected with her children through a deeper developing a deep sort of yoga practice. Um, there was uh, this amazing guy called Mark I met in the Isle of Wight who talked told this really harrowing story about heroin addiction and suicide attempts, but how he sort of worked his way through that with this communion with nature. And I also got to sit with a person um, who shared their experience of living with disassociative um, identity disorder. 
So they were living with 200 people, different personalities inside of themselves. And just to listen to someone share an experience like that, I thought that was really powerful. And so anyway, blah, blah, blah. I had many, many conversations and they were all really powerful. But um, I think what it helped me see is that, yes, everyone's lives are really different and we all have really different experiences of life. But there are also threads which tie them all together and there's universal things that come out. And there was themes of not being enough, themes of sort of being trapped by the economic system that surrounds us, themes of disconnection with nature, disconnection with workplaces, so many things. And I realised that so often we sort of separate mental health off to something separate from life. But mental health, it is life. It's, it's, the, it, it's in the governance, in the way we govern our countries, it seeps into the way we educate our children, it seeps, in, seeps into our connection with nature. It is the lens through which we view our own lives. It's the window through which we connect to each other. So, that's right, I'm about to finish. <laughs> yeah. So, I think I realised that essentially we created a world where it's really hard to share your own story and talk about how you're feeling. Like, we created that. But, the amazing thing about that is that we also have the power to change that. And so we have the power to share our individual stories, share how we're feeling, and create a world where we can thrive. There we go. <laughs>